Welcome to Jelly Trumpet! What if part two? Why didn't you get on the plane, Sharon? Tony, stop this stuff about Sharon! Well, that was easier than I thought. The receptionist was most helpful. Yes, we asked the question and she answered. There's Marco. No torture needed at all. And where? On the terrace, sitting at the last table on the left, sipping on an espresso. Great. Now what? We take him by surprise. And? And? I'm thinking. I can see that by the steam evaporating off the top of your head. I know. We ask Marco where Nigel is. Brilliant. OK, let's go. Interview Countdown. Welcome to Jelly Trumpet. Our guest on this episode is James McCabe from Sketch House. Do look them up. They're on the web. They've got their own website. Sketch House produces bespoke sketch comedy videos for business. And James is a copywriter. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. OK, James, let's go with our 12 questions in 12 minutes. So first of all, what is your business? All right. What is my business? Um, my business is a company called Sketch House, as you just said. Um, I run it with uh, my business partner, Mike Sengelo, and we basically we create bespoke sketch comedy uh, videos for PR and event companies and advertising agencies generally and direct business clients. So we create um, professional business, um, professional quality video for any organization that wants to um kind of rise above the noise that you'll find um, on all these various channels like LinkedIn and uh, and YouTube and all the rest of it. Um, and we just create what we think is more engaging content for, for them, um, particularly if it's an event company, more, more kind of um, engaging content for them, for their in-house training. So they're not, not ads per se, but um, what we call it is sponsored comedy that's shareable. So it's kind of almost like a Trojan horse. It, 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 it is kind of um, advertising content, but it looks like um, shareable comedy content. So it sneaks in under the radar. Cool. That sounds very interesting. I've seen your work. It, it is very high quality. Now, question two. This is one of my favourite questions. Who is your creative hero or heroine? Right. Well, um, I'd say my my creative hero goes back to the 1980s for me. It was a man um, called Keith Johnston who wrote a, a book called Impro. It kind of changed my life when I read it back then. Um, uh, it's a book that um, is um, that was designed for um, acting and improvisation, but um, I've used it in all my creative work, whether it be writing or performing, um, because it it it. it it's all about the idea of, of, of always saying yes and, and being present and in, in what you're doing and not blocking who you're working with, not having to be the cleverest person in the room, being open to, to adventure. Um, it basically teaches you how to, to be spontaneous. And I've used it as my Bible um, for my whole career. Cool. Cool. I know the book. I think we'll pick up on that conversation in, in the bonus episode. Now, uh, this is one because you're a creative chap. How do you start a project? Right. Yes. So um, with Sketch House, um, we're kind of straight in with uh, with the money. It's like we need to get a rough idea of, a, of um, the ad spend the client has, get a ballpark fee. And that's how we can start planning our production budget from when we understand how much they basically got um, in their spend. Um, so after that, um, of course, it's the brief. Um, we, we, we develop a brief with the client, what they want to get out of the project. Um, get a sense of the company, their goals, um, what they're trying to do, what problems they're trying to solve. And then we get into the, the fun bit, which is the concepting and the actual writing of the, of the content. So we develop some sketch ideas and concepts and we run those past the client, uh, client initially, see which ones they bite um, uh, uh, for and then choose the one that they like best. And uh, from there, we develop the full script. Cool. Which leads us on to the next question very neatly. I've, I've written this well, haven't I? To what <laughs> degree? To what degree do you map out each project? Well, being being as the sketches are film productions, um, the planning needs to be you know um, note perfect right down to the last detail. So the script needs to be signed off by the client before we shoot, um, and then there'll be a production meeting with the film company we use. 
um, make sure that the DOP can plan his approach and he'll create a shot script from that. And um, we'll also plan lights and sound and, and, and all these elements. And we also have to plan around a location, which um, has all sorts of logistics to go with that. And then, of course, there's casting the actors and rehearsing uh, the script um, and the run up to the shoot. Cool. Well, you've answered that one quite succinctly, James. Thank you for that. <laughs> we can now move on. Um, how? Well, you're going to probably answer this one quite succinctly. This is question five. How do you know when the project is finished? Yes. Um, well, it's once the, the post-production is done, basically, um, when it's in the can um, and then we'll have Mike, um, my, my business partner, uh, working in the edit suite with the DOP. And they'll try and get this, the clip as tight as it can be and, and, and obviously as funny as it can be. And, and that is all done in the edit because that's where all that, you know, as you all know, the timing is in, in the edit. Mm. Um, and then that edit is sent to the client for approval. Mm. And they often or they may ask for changes and we'll, we'll accommodate those. And um, when they're happy um, and the client's happy, um, they get their sketch delivered and then they set, uh, sort of set it free into the wilds and use it in, in whichever way that, that they want. Cool. So it's a very defined, well-defined process that you have for, for Sketch House. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we pretty much stick to it. Cool. So this one is more about your own creativity. What's the best thing someone has said to you that kept you going when it was a struggle? Yeah, um, quite recently, actually, um, the beginnings of, of Mike and my um, working and in, in doing comedy sketches together. I say recently, about seven years ago, um, we put together a show which we called The Fro Show, which is the genesis of Sketch House Reels. So it was a live show. We took a punt with it. We didn't really know whether we'd have an audience for it. We, it was performed locally. We didn't know it would be paying its way or not. Um, but we went ahead with it, um, finding actors, writing scripts. We booked the venue. Uh, and about two weeks before opening night, um, a couple of key cast members fell, fell out of the show for various reasons. And we were thinking we've lost the show. We've invested our money and we were very downcast. We thought um, we, we were going to be sunk before we'd even started. But our musical director, who's a terrific bloke um, called Paul Wheeler, he said, look, you could pull the pin if you want. You could cut your losses and, and, and walk away. And, and, and that's that. But he said, you know, I'll never forget it. He said, but I think you have a show. And he said, oh, I think you can do it. And it's just one of those moments like out of a Hollywood movie. And it was like, yeah, yeah we're all kind of. You know, <laughs> we can do the show right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Yeah, no. Lovely. It's, it's uh, really valuable when you have people just say, well, just do it. You know, let's get on with yeah. it. So Absolutely. this next question is really about your creative side, about are you honest with yourself? Yeah. That's a tricky one. Um, to the best of my ability, I suppose. But um I'd also uh, say I'm quite good at deluding myself <laughs> and uh, <laughs> telling myself stories. Mm. And, and the problem is if you're good at that, um, you know, you can um, think you're being honest with yourself, but you're not actually. So um, that, that, that's the honest truth. <laughs> cool. Well, that's good. I like to be, I like to be honest. I'm not sure I always am, but I'm not that deluded. So um, this is, Again, it's about your creative self. What's the proudest you've been of one of your ideas? Um, well, I, 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 I'm not sure I can think of a particular example, but um, I don't know if I even have a lot of time to be proud of, of, of ideas because I'm always looking for the next one. You know, it's, it's, um, it's, 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 I'm always going on to the next thing. But I, I love the feeling, you know, when I – and you probably feel the same when you hit on a good idea just that that buzz um kind of dopamine kind of hit that you get when you um find a good idea and you know it's a good idea um and, you know it sort of zings all over the place all the different possibilities of it and uh you know sometimes that's closely followed by um logistical problems and you think oh hang on actually no that's not going to work and you know the kind of the spiraling down mm. effect <laughs> yeah but then you know yeah. it's like surfing you're waiting for the next wave and there'll be another one along in a minute you know so you get off on the buzz is really what you're saying there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what is your next project? Uh, well, at the moment, it looks like Sketch House's um, next project is to develop a series of sketches for uh, an industrial pump company. An industrial and, uh, pump company. Yeah, yeah, you, know, you might think that it's uh, it sounds uh, you know like a terrible assignment, but actually I, I always find some of the um, – most kind of um, everyday um, strange things like that can be some of the most, you know, promising 
for comedy and, and laughs, you know, the, the most ordinary and, and, and um, straightforward things can have the best comedy. I agree with, I agree with you. Simple is the best. I tend to overcomplicate things, which I think a lot of creative people do. So uh, this one is question 10. Should creativity be taught as a skill in school? Mm, I, I think that's a good question. And um, I think absolutely. Yes. Um, I think it's basically teaching people how to think really and how to reason, how to discern um, ideas, how to problem solve. And these are all very transferable skills that you can, you know, build into your life. Um, no matter what career kids choose, I think um, creativity is, is such a great tool. And they learn how to be collaborative, how to, to work in a team. Um, you know, I learned drama as a kid. And I've st I'm still working using those skills, you know, every day, you know, the, the lifelong skills. That's great. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big, big fan of treating, um, teaching creativity to children and also um, uh, what's the other word? Knowledge, you know, knowledge is one part of it, but also wisdom. That's what I wanted to say. Mm. So I can't mm. be teaching wisdom. <laughs> So if well, a 10 year old came up to you and asked you what one thing would make me more creative, what would you reply? Um, well, with, with that one to, to sound pithy, I would say learning a musical instrument is a good place to start. Okay. Um, simply because, again, a bit like um, with teaching creativity, um, with um, a musical ability or, or having an, an instrument, there are transferable skills there too, I think um you know and and especially if you get a good music teacher because um i think you you get a mentor and when you get a mentor that's that's someone that will help you to be creative and help you to develop your creativity in a way that you you can't always do it on your own so that's why i picked the example of a of a, of a musical instrument because it comes with a teacher or a mentor or someone who, who can guide your creativity that's really interesting. I've not heard an answer like that before. I think our viewers, our listeners are going to pick up on that one. So uh, because you've been so good with you, keeping under time for each question, so we'll ask you the last of the 12, and then we're going to go on to the bonus question, which you've unlocked. So how can a listener get in touch with you? Okay. The uh, best thing, I guess, is to, to email um, Sketch House, um, which is um, the email address is funnybones at sketchhouse.net. Um, or you could um, phone us um, on 07792914037. Cool, cool, right, excellent. So you've unlocked the bonus question, James, <laughs> and your bonus Pandora's question, box. You, you've opened it. It's full of hope. It's all full of hope. <laughs> so um, this question is one of my favourite favourites, and it is, what's something no one knows about you? Um, okay. I auditioned for Lord of the Rings, believe it or not, back in 1997. Wow. Um, I was I auditioned to be an elf. Yeah. I can't remember the character's name, but um, I was very excited about it. But um, unfortunately, I don't know if they gave me the part or not, because I left New Zealand a couple of days <laughs> later and never came back. <laughs> <laughs> so you might have been an elf. My God. I that's might have been story. an elf. That is a great story to have. One of my favourite movie franchises of all time and it's coming out on yeah. amazon as well isn't it it's a sort of prequel yeah. so that's something very exciting okay so we're going to wrap there um so that was james mccabe of sketch house a bespoke sketch comedy video for business organization thank you very much james thanks jim hello marco where's nigel hi mr b follow me it worked. See? Tom sucked to ship. Where are we going? Looks like he's taking us up to the castle. Perhaps we should go back. Without Nigel? Oh, right, yes. We have to find Nigel. Oh, the castle reminds me of my own Chateau de Roudel. Golly, what was that? That was Marco ringing the doorbell to the castle Barbican. Neat. Welcome to the Tiger's Nest. Thank you, Marco. You can go now. Good morning. Good morning. Bonjour. I am Prince Susan. Follow me. Did he say Prince Susan? Yes, I think perhaps the prince is a non-binary prince. Oh, OK. C-Mac, run tape. 
challenge Jim. Each episode, we challenge Jim with a creative exercise. I am ready. The challenge this episode is to come up with as many what ifs as possible in one minute. Um, what 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 ifs? Go, uh, come on. What if we had a rotor for prime minister? We will take a turn. Uh, what if people took their rubbish home and then we could walk through nice, clean streets? What if we know, had a, a decent like, script? And what if we had a decent script? How dare you? Um, what if all social media networks lasted for one day only? What would you do with yourself? You know, there are things called books out there. Um, what if we all said yes once more than normal during the day? So you never know. What you've been accepting, seconds. but you've said yes for a change. Uh, what if we placed all the um, streets? No, what if we planted all the streets with fruit trees? Mm. Or coffee. Or coffee. Oh, that's even better, isn't it? What if we planted coffee trees all the way down the high street? What if we made wisdom a subject at school? You know, Ooh, people like come out wiser. What if coffee oh, gave me the power of flight? Five, four, Mr. B, three, I'm flying. Two, I can see your house from here. Tony's word of the episode. Tony's word of the episode. Tony's word of the episode. Gutania. Thank you, Tony. The definition of which is a country in the Balkans. Are you sure, Jim? Yes, I am. It's a real place, you know. We have to drop this feature, Jim. It's rubbish. Tony's word of the episode. Tony's word of the episode. Excuse me, Prince Susan, but we're looking for our friend Nigel. This high, fluffy tail, constantly nibbling his nuts. All in good time, good sir. First, I'll show you round the tiger's nest. Uh, what is it you do here, Prince Susan? Many things. Many things. Uh, this looks like a... Uh... If you'd like to wait here, in the waiting room. OK. Merde. Well, that's mould, ma'am. I don't like this. Well, it's a bit cold for a waiting room, isn't it? Could do with a window or two. It's a dungeon, Jim. Are you sure? Very sure, Jim. The chains hanging from the ceiling, the lack of windows, the damp running down the walls. Oh, and that bloke tied to that rack moaning softly into his chest. Well, it could be one of those hardcore gyms. Two et un tart à la crème anglaise. Let's have a coffee. Ah, oh, your majesty. Oh, good idea. Lucky that Prince Susan Miss C-Mac. Here we go, a perfect latte. Anything for you, your majesty? Oui. C-Mac is equipped with many accessories, is he not? Something like a lock-picking device, perhaps? Oh, yes, he has a lock-picking device. Lovely. Do you, uh, do you like the hint of Café Nero, Mr Jim? Oh, I do. We are not staying here, trapped like rats, enjoying coffee. Get moving and pick the lock. I think you should, Mr B. My coffee will get cold. I think you really should, Mr B. She's fuming. Move! OK, engaging lock-picking device. <laughs> You've blown the ruddy door off. Sorry, wrong button. Sorry about that. We didn't get travel insurance, you know, Mr B. It's only a door, Jim. Shh. But it's not our door, Mr B. I mean, it's not very polite to blow the ruddy door off. It won't happen again. We're leaving. Oh, good. I think at the very least we should leave a note. You know, explaining the accident, offering to pay for a new door. Good idea. C-Mac, a pen. No, let's, let's not use C-Mac for the note. I happen to have a notebook and a pen. Oh, come on, boys. Dear Prince Susan, sorry about the door. We had a small accident with our coffee machine's laser. We will, of course, be happy to make a wreck on the pen. Oh. What, Mr B? Uh, the door wasn't locked. Boys, we're here to rescue Nigel. Quite. Uh, after you, Your Majesty. Oh, merci, Monsieur. Well, I suppose we find Nigel, get back to the podcast and travel back to St Albans then. What has happened here? Uh, I, I do apologise, Prince Susan. Use the wrong button on the coffee machine. Coffee machine? Y yes. It won't happen again. Very well. Follow me. Tales from Jim's Medicine Journal. Getting stuck happens to us all. This big rock suddenly appears. We can't go round it and we can't go over it. What do you do now? 
Well, there's never a solution that will work every time. That's why you keep a medicine journal, so you can collect the ideas that work. When you use a medicine journal, you are recording your creative activity. What works for you? Tools and tips that you build up so you have your own coach, because only you can make yourself more creative. Yes, you can read books, watch videos and attend workshops, and all these will give you some tools. But only you know you, and only you can explore the depths of your imagination. So there you are with a great big rock in your path, a block. Going over it would only leave behind something that will have to be dealt with at a later date, and going round it is the same. That rock represents something, possibly a long-term doubt, so sit with it. Sit with it for a defined amount of time and worry the doubt like a dog with a bone. What works for me when I'm faced with a rock in my writing path the following. Going for a walk. Talking to friends. Changing the music. Leaving the rock alone for a few days. Laughing at myself. Once I had a massive boulder when halfway through writing a play. The last in a trilogy. All the above resulted in nothing. It took weeks and I was only writing on Saturday mornings. After weeks of nothing working, I'm stubborn, you see, I found out something simple that is, I hope, of use to you. I was asking the wrong question. The boulder was caused by focusing on a technical aspect to do with multiple characters and a plank of wood. When I changed the question to, how do I make this as funny as I can? Then the energy changed, the imagination was engaged and the technical aspect lost importance. Takeaway, when you are stuck, are you asking the wrong question? This is the Great Hall, 13th century. Some of the weapons on display date to this time. Those sabres, though, are late 18th century. Who owns this place? Is it a king or a queen? Have you seen Nigel? <laughs> All in good time, folks. Excellent swords. Impressive. I like what you've done with the place. Well, that's a lot of flags. They are for the ceremony. Oh, what ceremony would that be? On our left is the old banqueting hall. Now we call it the fruit room. And why is it called that? Because that's where we keep the fruit. Why so many small chairs? There will be a children's party later. As we go up the stairs, you will see the floor pattern in the hallway. Oh, I see it. The floor tiles make out a giant oak tree. Oh, look, Bee, in the tree. It's Nigel. <laughs> Now the startup micro sitcom. I miss Sharon. Our micro sitcom, the startup part two. Mary the entrepreneur is visiting a branding clairvoyant and visionary. Ooh, I like it. I like it a lot. Ooh. I can't... I can't quite sit up. I'm trapped. The beanbag chair is like quicksand. Your destiny is to rule the kingdoms of commerce. Tell me more. I see more. Yes. I see the brand. I see the logo. The colour's purple. Pink. Yes, pink. A B&M sitting on a crown of thorns. Thorns? Uh, no, not thorns, uh, horns. Horns of plenty. Mother Courage wearing a crown of horns with B&M emblazoned in pink. Oh, I see it too. Thank you. I'll show you out. Gwen, I mean Gwen Stella must rest now. Brace yourself. I'll pull you off. Oh, that would be lovely. I mean, what now? Well, how about signing up to our exclusive second site, How to Use the Visions in Digital Marketing course? Sounds terrific. Yes, and only £900. And 50 with a free tarot reading. What? Uh, where do I sign? The King of Giant Squirrels, Rex Scry, is the national animal of Gutania. The people gather every 1st of May to see him eat the first nuts of the season. I'm a bit lost, Mr B. What could this mean? Is Nigel the King of the Squirrels? Hmm. 
Perhaps he'll want to stay here amongst his people. No, he loves the podcast. On this floor, we have some of our major departments. We've had a good harvest this season. Harvest? What? Wheat? Barley? Apples? Data. Personal data. Company data. Government data. Charity data. Anything we can use to make Rutania even more data-rich. Soon, we will have all the data we need. Blimey. Well, well, well. Data? Your Majesty, it's information. Information is power. Oh, it used to be the sword. I like to think imagination rules the world. You old romantic, you. Hmm. What are all these people doing, Prince Susan? A variety of teams, a variety of tasks, all to secure the future of Gutania. For instance, Team 7 over there are rolling out conspiracy theories in the UK. Team 9 are creating the next fact of motivating means that, of course, demotivate and depress anyone scrolling through Instagram. What is that sound of water? Our cooling system. We have a significant server farm under the castle and extending into the mountain. Aha! Gregor, looking good. What does Gregor do? He looks very healthy. Gregor is our head of guilt and eating vision. His team specialise in contradictory nutrition advice, eating fads and body shaming. He came up with the Avo Selfie campaign. I remember that. People taking a selfie with their favourite avocado almost blew up the internet. And that crew with their baseball caps on backwards? That's Team 11, digital marketing gurus. You know, download my ebook, Seven Internet Secrets That Will Make You Millions Overnight. Was $435, now only $7.99 for one day only. Every so often we let them out and take pictures of them sitting on somebody else's supercar. <laughs> they are so funny. Stupid, but funny. What's through that door? The one with the full length mirror? That's where we keep our influencers. You may see them later. Come, it is time to meet Kurt, the Chief Disruptor. List of the week! This week, my prejudices. Number one, anyone wearing sunglasses indoors without a medical need. Number two, baseball caps worn backwards. Number three, Anyone who doesn't appreciate Kate Blanchett. Number four, influencers. Number five, husky owners who don't own a sled. Number six, Parisians, because I've met them. Number seven, Californians, because I've met them. Number eight, I shop at Waitrose. Waitrose is not a measure of your worth. Number nine, business coaches, you just need a good friend. Number ten, Lifestyle models. Read something. Number 11. Anything but parsnips. Welcome to Utania. Nigel! Nigel! Oh, my brave boy! That's interesting. A coffee machine on tape tracks. Coffee everywhere you go. I like it. How much do you want for it? C-Mac is not for sale. Nor is Nigel. I have knitted you a new scarf, my brave boy. Oh, yes, it's knitted from chainmail. So, you wanted Nigel for your ceremony? To keep the people happy with the king of squirrels eating the first nuts of May? No. What? 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 I want your podcast. Jelly Trumpet? Jelly Trumpet? Oh, Nigel. I knew if we brought Nigel here, you'd follow. Jelly Trumpet is ours. You can't have Jelly Trumpet. It's not for sale. See, my pet, your favourite. Clink, clink. I'm not buying the podcast. I'm taking it. But you can't. That's right, you can't. Do you remember when you signed up to the Podcast Network, you had to accept our terms and conditions? Uh, yes, there were pages and pages. I mean, well, no one reads the terms and conditions. Page 73. In the event of a podcast becoming popular, we reserve the right to take it over without paying anything at all. Time out, Mr B, we have to think of something. Righto, engaging next segment. The podcast Jelly Trumpet is not asked. Prince Susan will show you out. Well, uh, well, let's talk. Wait, uh, before we go, uh, share a coffee with us. Mr B, 
the super, super, super latte with extra milk. What? Oh, oh, right, yeah. Setting C-Mac to super steep. Your Majesty, take a blade. Oh, but of course. Look out, Chief Disruptor. She's got a blade. And engage steam. My eyes. The latte. Get her, Prince Susan. I will cut you to ribbons. I think not, Prince. Nigel, after three we ride. One. Make for the children's party. Security. Engaging C-Mac boost. Two. We can lose them amongst the children. Look, Jim, lose the security people. Must be a dozen or more. Three. Ride my furry steed. After them. What now? There's loads of them. I should really have redrafted this episode. I mean, sword playing a podcast. <laughs> We can't fight all of them, Jim! We have to. Then over the balcony, run to Jelly Trumpet, and then... Then what, Jim? We become an outlaw podcast. Forever roaming time, space and media. But we'll all be free. I agree, Mr Jim. Freedom! But what do we do about all these security people? Good boy, Nigel. Her Majesty is putting up a terrific fight. She's getting the better of Prince Susan. Look, the security team is getting closer, Jim. What can we do? Wait, I know. More steam, Mr B, and then we party. We party like unsupervised children. What? Uh, OK, setting C-Mac to steam overdrive. Ready, Mr B? Ready, Mr Jim. Fire! This Vermont is deadly. Oh, that jelly works a treat too. The pies, Mr B. Use the pies. Your Majesty, time to go. Very well, Monsieur Jim. Nigel, avance. My hair. Aha! Good boy, Nigel. You speak very well. Everyone, this way. Welcome back, Nigel. Oh, yes, mon brave boy. Have a brioche. Oh, but don't get any crumbs on your new scarf. What now, Mr Jim? We're outlaws now, Mr B. Set course for season three. Aye, aye, Motom. Setting course for season three. Huzzah! Huzzah! Thank you for listening. Thank you for all those that encouraged Jelly Trumpet. Thank you to Mr. Tony for the voice work. Thank you to Miss Claire, the voice of Queen Helena and Mary the Entrepreneur. And thank you, Mr. B and Kel. Stay fab. That was Jelly Trumpet, making you more creative with Jim Kinlock and Mr. B. Sponsored by Conversion Detectives, the creative digital marketing agency. Search Conversion Detectives. And now an exclusive first single of their second album from We Paint Houses called Maybe. Maybe I'm right Maybe I'm wrong Maybe it's time to quit Carry on Maybe I'm in Maybe I'm out it's time to sigh Just let it out Maybe I'm big Or maybe I'm small Or maybe there's nothing Some clarification, Mr. B. Yes, Jim? Tony Sharon? Yes? Is Tony Sharon a kitten? A fish? Or a real lady? We simply don't know. Oh. But we think Sharon's a fish. 
Well, stranger things happen on other podcasts.